purpose, and a portion of our proceeds are going to that organization. She specifically helps human, tra human trafficking survivors. Her story is epic. It is actually being shopped as a movie and a book deal right now. And trafficked ever even survived. So, you know, to be one of those small number, that, that small few that did survive, I feel a strong pull to make sure that people understand why concealed carry is so, so important. Um, Tammy doesn't realize this, but when she taught me how to to shoot a firearm, um, I had never, I was afraid of guns my whole life, even after having gone through so much trauma. I never thought to pick one up. Um, and even after marrying a Marine, <laughs> um, you know, I just wouldn't, I, I didn't feel confident enough to be able to handle one. But, you know, with the knowledge of being able to properly protect myself, if ever I was in a situation where I needed to be able to use a firearm, um, if I didn't have that knowledge, um, I wouldn't have the, the level of confidence that I have today. Like when I go out, um, when I leave the house, um, I'm aware that you know people are dangerous and things terrible things can happen to you because I am a, a testimony to that. But I also, in that same vein, have the knowledge and understanding that I can protect myself, and I wish I, I wish a blank blank was. <laughs> self-defense courses, um, firearms training, safety <laughs> training on how to use and how to use and respect mm -hmm. the uh, the power that is in behind a firearm. But as we all know, this is the best crowd to for me to be telling this to. Uh, you all know the power of being able to protect yourselves and being able to carry your firearm confidently knowing that it's really your intention behind the presence of the weapon that makes it you know uh, powerful and not not the fact that you just have it on you right um, and so I'm so glad everybody is here um, and I also want to take a moment to think about the young people who don't have the luxury of having someone in their lives or in their immediate surroundings, um, those at-risk youth who can teach them about firearms, firearm safety, why is it important? Um, trafficking, what is trafficking? Um, growing up, I heard a lot that, oh man, you know, human trafficking happens. And, um, and, and even when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, I, I was taught that human trafficking was something that didn't happen here in America, it happens somewhere far away. You know, that's not even our world. Why should I be worried about that? You know, I will send prayers out to the people that are going through that, but never did I understand that I could be on my way to school one day and not be able to return home to my family the next day because trafficking does exist. And I'm sure now we've been hearing a lot that this is an issue that we're dealing with, especially here in Atlanta. Um, it's extremely prevalent. Um, but rarely do we sit down and talk about the things that we could do to prevent um, many other children from falling victim to the issue of trafficking. But um, I just want to give you guys a, a few moments to ask a few questions. Um, and then after that, I'm going to let Tom pick up from there. So are there any questions? There are two things that I tell people um, about how to arm their young people with information to prevent themselves from being trafficked. Um, because for one, this is not happening to just girls anymore. Mm -hmm. We are in the day and age where our young men, it's happening to them more often than we even want to admit and we want to realize. And it's even more shameful and more heavy for them to express what has happened to them because they are males. So for our, that's why I say young people. But for our young people, I tell them two things. One, a predator, knows, a predator knows the smell of its prey. So in nature, when a wolf is looking for a rabbit to consume, 
it knows what the rabbit's footprints look like. It knows what the rabbit smells like. And the same thing is for predators that are preying on children. They know what a shy, um, a disconnected from peers sort of person who would be a low hanging fruit. So traffickers are lazy and predators are lazy also. <laughs> they want the easy access, you know, type of victim. Somebody that um, doesn't have a huge support system, right? That is not gonna fight against, you know, what they're gonna try to do to them. So they are looking for a certain type of behavior, but I will caution you that there is not a, a type of crowd um, that makes you more susceptible to trafficking as a young person that you could be in. Um, and, 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 and also the preference of the predator is also at play, right? So what I tell all young people is to keep in mind that one of the main tools that all traffickers, predators, people that are trying to harm you in general will do is that they will try to make you feel isolated from all of the people around you that love you and want to protect you because that makes it easier for them to have you for themselves, right? So whenever you have that person, that friend, even if they're your same age, even if you think you can trust them, even if dot, 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 if they're trying to separate you from the people who love you, your parents, your, um, your mentors, um, people that you can trust that have never tried to harm you and they, they try to create distrust between you mm -hmm. and your support system, that person is likely trying to harm you. I um, have uh, a question. What, yes. uh, as parents, yes. what can we do to look out for signs for that? So besides mm -hmm. like being the protectors we feel like we are, like what cues are we missing or what should mm -hmm. we be looking for in our children to, to realize that maybe they are being stalked, they are becoming prey? Um, so for one, I always tell everybody, your child, uh, I don't want to say your child. I don't want to make it too personal. No, I but, um, I've, I've heard stories of children who have been trafficked out of their own homes um, and while still living with their parents. Um, we have to understand the nature of the trafficking relationship. Um, not all children who are being trafficked are, um, you know, being forced. In, 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 they, they're not all being forced into prostitution in a public way if that makes any sense, okay? Uh, it could be that um, somebody is bringing, it, it could be, it, sometimes even girls traffic other girls at times, but we have to understand that trafficking means the, um, to force, coerce, or entice a minor into exchanging um, sexual, uh, so whenever there's a sexual encounter, that happens by force, coercion, or um, under the threat of danger, mm -hmm. that child is being trafficked. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, um, so we have to help them understand all the different forms that it can happen in. It, um, the trafficker may tr uh, convince the, the young person to lie to the parents and go to someone's house mm -hmm. and, and commit you know, the sexual act you know, they may have the person, they may bring the person, it may be a boyfriend that says, well, I want you to not spend the night with me, I want you to spend the night with my friend. That's still trafficking, and it's all in the same vein, right? Um, so we, we just have to make sure they understand all the different ways it can happen, and, and um, to know that for us as parents, there's nothing they could ever do to separate us from their love. From you know, there's nothing they could ever do to make us stop loving them. Mm -hmm. So even if somebody threatened you, told you to do something, if you fail for it, you know, just make sure there's open lines of communication at all times, and um, try as hard as it is, try not to jump on them when they're giving you uh, details about things that they have done. No matter how dangerous it is, let them express themselves. And, and try your best to use that information to help uh, fortify their support system. You want to start out going to where it's the worst in the world, where it's the center of gravity for this entire problem globally. And if we can enact change there, we can then take our model 
for criminal network disruption and rescuing survivors and then rehabilitating them and empowering them to rescue more girls just like them and take that to other parts around the world, back to America um, and other regions yeah, globally. And what we do essentially is uh, train undercover operators to go into red light districts, go into criminal systems, embed themselves actually within criminal networks, um, cultivate sources, uh, impersonate criminals themselves, and look out for minors that are currently being trafficked in these systems. And then we have a team of uh, former special forces operators that come in and actually kick down doors and uh, take those girls out of that situation and then take the traffickers down. And uh, to date, uh, we've saved about 700 or 7,500, so 7,500 girls uh, from being trafficked. And this year, thank you very much. Wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll take the applause. Thank you. No. But uh, and this year, we're looking to uh, save an additional 6,300 uh, due to the current networking that we have fully mapped. So I'm talking about. 700 traffickers across 70 networks that are all trafficking children in the same city. It's like a thriving industry, and unlike anything you've ever even heard of. And um, basically what we're doing is going out there, sending our guys and gals undercover into these systems, finding all of these uh, uh, you know, situations in which trafficking is happening, finding all these girls, and then going in them, uh, hitting them hard, taking down the traffickers, rehabilitating the survivors, and then creating a system in which the survivors themselves come back and give us intelligence on where they came from and give us a brighter picture about what the criminal network looks like, enabling us to rescue more girls, and then those girls doing the same thing, and having this amazing ripple effect where we get more intelligence, are able to rescue more girls, and then those girls go in and actually rescue more girls themselves. So it's a really beautiful system that um, has just kind of emerged within our organization. Um, and we're going out there this year, and we're going to try to take out 50 networks. And we're currently doing it. Last week, we actually had three successful rescues, a 15-year-old, 11-year-old, and a 5-year-old. And um, we're going to keep doing our thing. And we uh, just need resources. That's really all we need to keep doing uh, what we're doing and taking these traffickers out. Um, currently, the economics of the business is uh, it only takes $500 to save a life from trafficking. Um, <clears throat> so we'd love to you know, partner with any of you today if you're interested in making a donation and supporting the rescue uh, of a child from trafficking with Asia and myself uh, and both of our organizations working together. Um, you know, we'd love to partner with you and uh, see what we can do to, to create some massive impact this year. Um, so if you're interested, uh, feel free to raise your hand or just um, you know stay anonymous. My lovely fiance is going to hand out some pledge cards to everyone. And uh, if you'd like to partner with us, feel free to make a contribution of any value. Thank you. I'm extremely close to iAsia. Um, really? Just iAsia? And, <laughs> and her husband. Her husband is a Marine, my best friend, right? Um, and I need you guys to understand. So just, I'm, we're, we're gonna briefly overview. Again, her story is, you know, um, movie and book deal, amazing. What's happening with her situation. But I need you guys to understand the significance of where you are right now. So first of all, when she was in captivity, she had two children by her captors. One of them passed away, and that's how she was rescued. The reason that we are here is that she bought this property and dedicated it to her daughter that passed away. Oh, okay. So this is a sacred space, okay? This is a sacred space. And this is something that we are, you know, I treasure her. Her spirit is not broken. Right. And that's what matters yes. the most to me. Like, she is yes. the most amazing, bubbly person that you could ever meet. But she got a train killer with her and her husband. Yes. Don't pull up. I'm her best friend. Don't pull up. Okay? Don't. Another, another killer. She's surrounded by it. Ain't nothing else going to happen to her. Nothing else. But I want you guys to give it up one more time for my best friend, Aja. <laughs>